In our lecture number 48, we solved a numerical example which involved Lossy dielectric in a parallel plate capacitor. That example was very simple since we were just looking at a scenario during the steady state that is when the DC voltage source was applied for a long duration. Now we will see what happens during transients. So in our case, in present case, we will apply a step voltage of magnitude V at T is equal to zero and we will see what happens during transients. Now, uh, the initially, let us say at t is equal to zero minus, on this interface, there will not be any surface charge. And in a dielectric, the surface charge cannot build up instantaneously. That is, it cannot be an instantaneous process. We will see that there can be many kinds of polarization like uh, molecular polarization, electronic polarization, depending on the frequency of the uh, stimulus or the electric field. So all of these take some time to occur. So in this way, we can say that this polarization charge or the charge on the interface in the dielectric cannot appear instantaneously. So we know that this is equal to zero at t is equal to zero minus as well as t is equal to zero plus now we know that let us say this is uh, x x direction now we know that uh, d1 minus d2 dot a n2 is equal to rho s i so when this is equal to zero, then it implies that D1 N minus D2 N is equal to zero or the normal component of this flux density vector is continuous. Let us say this width is A and this total is A plus B and D will be like in this direction. So initially this will be uh having a continuous value that is there is no discontinuity at t is equal to zero <clears throat> along the interface now we can write that this potential v is equal to e1 a plus e2 b furthermore d1 is equal to epsilon 1 e1 and d2 is equal to epsilon 2 e2 or it implies epsilon 1 e1 is equal to let us say i write d1 is equal to d2 initially when these are equal d1 is equal to d2 is equal to dx is equal to epsilon 2 e2 so i can write e1 is equal to dx by epsilon 1 and e2 is equal to dx by epsilon 2 so i will put this value here so v is equal to dx by epsilon 1 a plus dx by epsilon 2 b or dx a epsilon 2 plus b epsilon 1 over epsilon 1 epsilon 2 is equal to v or we can find this dx is equal to v epsilon 1 epsilon 2 a epsilon 2 plus b epsilon 1 so this is the value of the flux density vector at t is equal to 0 plus now you see that at t is equal to 0 minus it was 0 but at t is equal to 0 plus it is non-zero so it implies that it must be an impulse since it is changing instantaneously and why is it changing instantaneously because it has to deposit charge on these metal plates of the parallel plate capacitor and furthermore it has to maintain this continuity along the interface so you see 
even though that uh, this charge cannot develop instantaneously but on the metal plates to deposit this charge instantaneously we need an impulse uh, flux density vector that's why this will be an impulse now we know that the displacement current density jd is usually written as dou by dou t of d or it implies jd dt if t varies from 0 minus to 0 plus is equal to d of d when it varies from d at 0 minus to d at 0 plus it implies that d at 0 plus minus d at 0 minus is equal to jd dt from 0 minus to 0 plus now it will be non zero if and only if this is an impulse let us say this is an impulse of k amplitude is equal to d of 0 plus minus d of 0 minus so you see that this current density is going to have an impulse and that impulse is going to have a value k is equal to d of 0 plus minus d at 0 minus so i can now find the value of the impulse current density or due to this displacement current uh, as simply epsilon 1 epsilon 2 v a epsilon 2 plus b epsilon 1 is equal to d at x 0 plus minus dx 0 minus and this is an impulse so i have found that there will be a displacement current density which will be an impulse only so that it can uh, put a charge on the metal plates now the top plate and the bottom plate here it was v plus and here it was minus will have a positive charge sir, on the interface and this will have a negative charge on the interface given by sigma f or if i write rho s only is equal to at x uh, so in the figure we had x axis was like this it was a and it was a plus b and it was zero and it was the bottom plate with plus and this was the top plate with minus so rho s at x is equal to zero is equal to dx is equal to minus of rho s at x is equal to a plus b so in this way we can find the various charge density also and we have already found various electric field intensity as well as the flux density now let us see what happens uh, once this uh, step voltage is there for a very long duration so based on our experience of the lecture number 48 we expect that uh, at this uh, when this step voltage is for a long duration then there must be a uniform current density through the dielectrics both the dielectrics so the current density when t tends to infinity is simply given by sigma 1 f e1 is equal to sigma 2 e2 and again as we solved in our previous lec uh, lecture number 48 uh, e1 a plus e2 b is equal to v and using this we can find this uh, current density conduction current density as equal to sigma 1 sigma 2 v sigma 2 a plus sigma 1 b now this is when uh, the step is there for long duration so we can find the interface charge density sigma si by simply uh, solving in a simple procedure similar to our lecture number 48 
and we will find it is equal to epsilon 2 sigma 1 minus epsilon 1 sigma 2 v over sigma 2 a plus sigma 1 b. Now what will happen during the transient phase that is from 0 plus to t is equal to very long duration. So in between what will happen during this phase what will be the transients. So for that we need to solve the continuity equation. Now in our one of the lectures we have studied continuity equation and it was del dot j plus dou by dou t of rho is equal to 0 and we know rho is simply del dot d. So del dot j plus dou by dou t of d is equal to 0. So this will give us a boundary condition a n2 dot j1 minus j2 plus dou by dou t of d1 minus d2 should be equal to 0 or putting various values and solving according to the vector sign of a and 2 j1 j2 I can write on the interface as sigma 2 e2 minus sigma 1 e1 plus d by dt of epsilon 2 e2 minus epsilon 1 e1 it is very simple and the procedure is similar to what we did in our lecture number 48 while uh, solving these uh, equation and finding the proper signs it equal to 0. Now with number uh, with using equation v is equal to a e1 plus b e2 we can obtain a simple differential equation from this previous equation as in terms of e1 only d by dt of e1 plus e1 over some time constant is equal to sigma 2 v over sigma 1 uh, sorry epsilon 1 a plus epsilon 2 a and b i have already solved it and uh, i can convert this equation using this if i write that tau is an equivalent uh, time constant equal to epsilon 1 b plus epsilon 2 a over sigma 1 b plus sigma 2 a now this differential equation is very easy to solve and on solving with the the given initial condition that e1 is what we found when t was equal to 0 plus uh, i can write e1 as equal to sigma 2 v over sigma 2 a plus sigma 1 p 1 minus e minus t by tau plus epsilon 2 v epsilon 2 a plus epsilon 1 b e minus t by tau similarly i can write e2 also as sigma 1 v sigma 2 a plus sigma 1 b it is just pure mathematics nothing else the only concept involved uh, i already told that there will be an impulse uh, in the displacement uh, flux density and it will be epsilon 1 v epsilon 2 a plus epsilon 1 b e minus t by tau so just by re rearranging and solving the uh, equations uh, we can bring out these two values of e1 and e2 now from this we can find the interface charge density as epsilon 1 e1 
माइनस एप्सलॉन टू ई टू इज इक्वल टू पुटिंग दी वैल्यूज दीज टू वैल्यूज इन दिस इक्वेशन एज वी विल फाइंड दैट द सरफेस चार्ज डेंसिटी ऑन द इंटरफेस विल स्टार्ट फ्रॉम जीरो एंड इट विल रीच टू इट स्टडी स्टेट वैल्यू विच वी फाउंड इन पार्ट बी ऑफ दिस लेक्चर और द लेक्चर नंबर फोर्टी एट ऑल्सो थ्रू दिस एक्सपोनेंट एक्सपोनेंशियल फंक्शन सो यू सी इनिशियली एट टी इज इक्वल टू जीरो दिस विल बी इक्वल टू जीरो एंड टी इज इक्वल टू इन्फिनिटी इट्स वैल्यू इज वॉट वी फाउंड इन द पार्ट बी सो इन दिस वे we can find the surface charge density also now we need to find the current density so i have told that current density is composed of two parts sigma e and conduction and the displacement current density so in the electric one it will be like this now i know all these values e1 and d1 as well so i can just put the values directly and on rearranging i can write j is equal to sigma 1 sigma 2 sigma 2a plus sigma 1b plus sigma 1 minus epsilon 1 by tau epsilon 2 epsilon 2 a plus epsilon 1b minus sigma 2 over sigma 2a plus sigma 1b into e minus t by tau now there will also be that impulse term which will be existing at t is equal to 0 only and that impulse term term we have just seen in the beginning of this lecture it is equal to epsilon 1 epsilon 2 epsilon 2 a plus epsilon 1 b delta t and v will be the common factor in every term so in this way we can find the current density also which is composed of both displaced displacement current density as well as the conduction current density so you see that this is a mixture of both displacement current as well as conduction current initially when t is equal to 0 only the displacement current is there which is impulsive in nature then gradually conduction current will come into the picture and when it t tends to infinity then displacement current goes away only conduction current remains so in this way we can see that this lossy dielectric is acting as a combination of series capacitors and resistors in parallel to them showing the lossy component and this is the applied voltage so initially when the voltage is applied then the capacitors will be coming into the picture and they will get charged by an impulsive current and gradually both will come into the picture and once the steady state reach then these will get open and only conduction current will be there so in this way we can see that using uh, electromagnetic field theory we can solve numerical examples uh, uh, and get the same circuit equations which we find through network theory but electromagnetic field theory gives an insight into the real functioning or the process which is happening inside the dielectrics so in this way we can solve all kind of problems at least with the simple geometry where some uh, you know uh, symmetry is there so that we can easily find various components of the fields and the electric field intensity now let us say that uh, this uh, voltage instead of being step is a sinusoidal voltage given by v not 
cos omega t or i can write vt is equal to real part of v not e j omega t okay so field will be similarly can be written as real part of e1 e j omega t where e1 is a complex quantity now uh, this magnitude is complex uh, it may have some phase also and similarly e2 is equal to real part of e2 e j omega t so these are complex amplitude it may have some phase component also furthermore we know that e1 a plus e2 b should again give us the voltage v naught while the interface charge conservation equation that is uh, j conduction plus do by do t of d that is displacement current density is equal to zero should give us sigma 2 e2 minus sigma 1 e1 for this part plus now dou by dou t can be replaced by j omega for sinusoidal steady state conditions so i can write it as j omega epsilon 2 e2 minus epsilon 1 e1 should be equal to 0 or on simplifying i can write it as sigma 2 plus j omega epsilon 2 e2 plus sorry minus sigma 1 plus j omega epsilon 1 e1 is equal to 0 and this will go, give us a solution as this equation and this equation will give us solution e1 is equal to e2 over sigma 1 plus j omega epsilon 1 and e1 over sigma 2 plus j omega epsilon 2 is equal to v naught over b sigma 1 plus j omega epsilon 1 plus a sigma 2 plus j omega epsilon 2 so in this way we can find the field also during a sinusoidal source application now we will observe that uh, the interface surface charge density rho si is equal to epsilon 2 e2 minus epsilon 1 e1 will be simply given by epsilon 2 sigma 1 minus epsilon 1 sigma 2 v naught b sigma 1 plus j omega epsilon 1 plus a sigma 2 plus j omega epsilon 2 now we can see that when this uh, frequency is very large compared to the relaxation time constant that is when this omega is very very large compared to sigma 1 over epsilon 1 and or omega is greater greater than sigma 2 over epsilon 2 then in that scenario you can see that the surface charge density from this equation will tend to zero so it shows that when the frequency is too high that uh, the polarization is not able to take its place because uh, they are not able to respond so quickly with the changing field then there cannot be a surface charge density because the polarization cannot follow the stimulus of the input so in this way when the frequency is too high then this circuit as we know from the circuit theory will behave as a capacitive circuit only 
and this is what we are seeing from electromagnetic field theory also so in this way we have derived the equivalent circuit theory model from electromagnetic field theory on only now we can find the current also simply uh, by solving uh, this uh, this equation by finding j is equal to sigma 1 e1 is equal to sigma 2 e2 and we can easily write i is equal to j into the surface area as v naught over r2 over r2 c2 j omega plus 1 plus r1 over r1 c1 j omega plus 1 it is very easy where r1 and r2 are simply written by r1 is equal to uh, 1 by sigma 1 a over s and r2 is equal to 1 by sigma 2 b over s and c1 is equal to is a epsilon 1 by a and c2 is equal to s epsilon 2 by b so by solving these equations simply we can find this equation and we can see that this is again referring to this model only so in this way we can now understand easily what is actually happening in a, a practical capacitor whenever we apply a sinusoidal voltage source on it actually it is trying to behave like a lossy dielectric problem only but if the frequency is too high then we can see that it will behave predominantly as a capacitor but uh, the frequency is uh, low then it will behave as uh, a problem having both conduction as well as uh, displacement current densities and if there is no you know uh, uh, variation with the frequency and we have already applied it for a long duration the dc voltage then it will just be a pure uh, conduction problem only so if you find that this lecture is helpful to you then please share and subscribe our youtube channel and also join our telegram group whose link is given in the description of this video thank you